So these are going to be reviews of steel products. We are a landscaper and company. Um, I am not a professional steel technician, so if I misquote something, please forgive me. Put any comments or questions down below. Hit the thumbs up button, subscribe. We are going to be doing reviews of all the steel equipment that our local dealer sells. So if you've got any questions, just let us know. Yep. Okay, so this is Derek. He is our local steel dealer. He's the one that's letting us use his facility and go through all this equipment. He wants to tell you about this song because it's so special. Hey guys, like I said, Derek here with Brown Airs Motorsports, uh, your number one dealership for outdoor power equipment in East North Carolina. We're also your master certified uh, steel tech here locally in Pitt County. Uh, we have here today the MS271 chainsaw. This is our number one selling chainsaw, also known as the Farm Boss from Steel. Um, saw is very powerful, coming in an impressive 50.2 cc's uh, and about 3.49 base horsepower. So it's a very powerful chainsaw and that's why it's the number one choice for most homeowners and landscapers in the US. Um, this guy's, uh, you can get it with a 16 or 18 or a 20. Most popular for us, we're going to stock this with a 20 inch bar and that comes standard with the 325 pitch chain. Uh, the chain is very aggressive. Uh, but not so much that it puts the saw under big load. So with that 325, we can handle that 20 inch bar easily. Um, the uh, chainsaw does not, this one doesn't feature any decompression valves or anything like that. It's gonna be very easy for us to start. We don't have a big effort as far as uh, to start with the saw. Another reason why it's very popular. Uh, but it's also, um, you got your standard features like most of our saws, we got the chain brake feature uh, on the unit and we still have our master interlock switch. Um, Like most of our steel chainsaws, uh, this saw is going to feature a translucent fuel tank so we can see visually how much fuel is in the saw while we're operating it. And it's going to feature the flip caps, which are redesigned several years back, so these are a lot easier to open and close now. And they have more indicators on uh, when they're unlocked and locked. So here we can see the circle uh, here, which means I tell people the O is means it's open. And then if we flip it around to the solid bar, these now match and we know that the fuel tank is locked securely and we won't leak any fuel. The bar and chain all works the same way and has the same align marks. Our chain adjustment features, which is very common on most of our steel chainsaws, we have the easy bar chain adjustment here on the side in between our two bar nuts. We'd loosen the two bar nuts and then turn the, the screw clockwise to tighten our chain. When you tighten your chain, you want to be able to pull the chain uh, away from the bar, but it should snap back on the top and the bottom. If you cannot pull the chain away from the bar, the chain is too tight. If it does not snap back on the top and the bottom, it is too loose. That's how you're gonna know when you're at the right tension to safely use your chainsaw. All right. Now we're gonna talk about the master interlock switch, which is featured on almost or all steel chainsaws or almost all steel chainsaws uh, and is featured on the 271. Here, the operator will take one hand and place his palm to push the safety bow down and then squeeze the trigger and after squeezing the trigger then and only then do we engage the master interlock switch because if we try to force this down without squeezing the trigger first we can and possibly do damage to the unit so we're going to again palm down push the safety bell squeeze the trigger and then engage the master interlock and if we're on a cold start we want to push it all the way down to the cold start position and then release the trigger the saw will remain in that position while we pull it and uh, until it fault starts once the saw fault starts, then we'll move this saw up to the warm start position and continue to uh, pull the saw until the saw starts and runs. At that time, the chain brake should have been engaged when we uh, first started the saw. And we want to quickly, after the saw starts, it'll be running at a higher idle speed. We want to blip the throttle to release uh, the engine back down to the run and idle speed. Uh, now the saw is good to use and we can release our chain brake and the chain will not turn. Um, Guys, the biggest thing I can give you for advice here is do not let this saw run. It only takes 30 seconds to a minute to cook a sprocket bearing at that higher speed with the chain brake engaged. So make sure that as soon as that saw starts, you quickly flip that throttle and get that saw to the run position. Okay, so this saw, so we just went over all of its features. It is carbureted, it's not the Mtronic. Um, how many days a week you know, would a homeowner or a landscaper be using the saw and it'd be okay? 
I mean, if you pick up a new year using this saw on a regular basis, thanks to the IntelliCarb system that Steel has uh, on most of their saws, including this 271, uh, it's going to require little maintenance. So we're usually only going to touch the air filter on the saw uh, if we see a loss in power. So if you start noticing that the saw is hard to start, or if we see a loss in power, uh, we can quickly get to the air box on these saws that provide your uh, your bar tool with each one of these that'll open this up. And you can use a T27, uh, which is nice and fits in there, or you can use this bar tool or any flathead screwdriver and get access to our air filter. Um, but I mean, as far as, when would you need to move up to like a 261 or like a professional, like a login type saw? If you're gonna use this saw uh, more than two or three days a week and you're using it, or if you're ever using a saw for, for professional use or commercial use, anything outside of your home, uh, that's where the saws like the 261s uh, really come into play. Not only are they more powerful, uh, but the engines are designed better. You're gonna have more of a complete engine where this engine, basically the, the magnesium crankcase underneath the bottom is the bottom end of the engine. Mm -hmm. uh, on those 261s, you have more of a complete engine dropped into the case here. Uh, and you have heavier bearings, and then we've got some uh, difference as far as the intakes, or it may have an intronic feature as well. So um, if you're using the saw more than, even professionally, if you're using it more than one or two days a week, you, you probably, probably should, should invest in a nicer saw like the 261. Because the 261 is, is what, $150 more? Yeah, I think it's around, a, around $150, $200 more than this chainsaw. Uh, but it, it can is, handle that. It, absolutely. And it, it can handle day in, day out. I mean, that's a saw that you can go out and work with 8 to 12 hours a day if you have to. Um, and the Mtronic is going to help it have more power and it's also going to help take care of that saw because uh, the Mtronic kind of it monitors your engine RPM uh, so I don't want to talk getting too much of that because it's not featured on this saw uh, but it will help bring that RPM down in the case of a dull chain uh, so and number one killers on chainsaws guys you know, is dull chain so if you notice that you're having to really push or lean into your chainsaw it's probably a good time yeah. to, to stop and replace that chain, it's not worth but the extra push. That's where Steel has carbide chain, we'll go on that in another video. Yes, they do. That's all we've switched to using, and since we've done that, no more sharpening chains, they last 10 times longer, and I mean, they're indestructible. Yeah. But, so this saw, even for a landscaper, you know, if you're cutting a tree down and you're using it a couple of days a month, I mean, this is the saw to have. The price point, the weight, I mean, there's just nothing better. I mean, we, we yeah, own these saws. It's hard to beat a 271. There's a reason why it's been the number one selling chainsaw for over 20, 30 years. Yep. Uh, and air fitter guys, these, these, this is lovely. I love the new air fitter setup on these new saws. Uh, we see this pretty much across the board. Uh, you can even upgrade this to an HD2 filter um, and even get longer life. Yeah, the pleated filter, yep. that's right. Uh, and the pleated filter can actually be washed. This is a maintenance free filter. You don't want to blow this out or anything because you'll blow the felt out. Uh, but again, we're not going to mess with this until we see a power loss. Yeah. Um, so if you see a power loss, it's a good time to take it out and you just twist right off, you chunk it and you can get your new one from your local steel dealer, Ron Ayers Motorsports, and then click that back in and just reassemble us off. All right, cool deal. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Okay, that was a review of the steel product that our local dealer carries. If you've got a question or would like a review on a certain piece of equipment, post a comment below and we'll try to do that next.